Welcome back to Bits of an Artist's Life. This is Sandy. In this week's video, it is packed with stuff, but what I want to start with right off the bat is to answer the number one question I got last week. So last week's video was an art haul and I opened my Here and Dash Neo Pastels and demonstrated them and talked about them and I love them. I have several other different brands of oil pastels, but one of the things you guys kept asking over and over was how do I seal them, especially in my sketchbooks. So I wanted to address that right off the bat this week. I wanna to talk to you about a couple of different ways that I do it, especially in my sketchbook. Then I wanna take you outside and demonstrate how I seal these. So the first thing that I do, if I'm gonna take my sketchbook with me, out someplace. I will make sure I have some wax paper folded up in the back because if I'm only going to take one sketchbook and I know I'm going to be doing a bunch of sketches, I definitely don't want to take time to use fixative and let that dry because you have to do several layers. So I'll take some wax paper, stick that in between the layers, then I can just turn the page and it will smush over onto the wax paper some, but that's not a big deal and it preserves it. So wax papers are great when you can also use glycine. I buy really large rolls of it for packaging paintings that I sell for shipping because it's the most protective thing that you can get. It's just, it's wonderful, but it is, ex is expensive. I save all the little bits that I cut off and I keep them rolled up. I don't have any with me because I've recently used it all, but that's something else that you can use as glycine if you want to go really pro, but wax paper will do the job. So I'll just use those wax papers in between pages to get things home. Once I get things home, I have been using this fixative that I love. It's really, really wonderful and very, very worth the money. It is not cheap. I'm gonna tell you that, it's not cheap. The thing with this though, is you have to do just thin layers and let them dry. If it is a sketch that I really like and I'm like, I need to preserve this, I'll do three or four layers. If it's one, then it's just kind of like, eh, it's okay, I'll do probably two layers, at least two though. I'm gonna take you outside in a minute and show you how I do that, because I do have a couple tips. But something I've bought recently is a little travel size hairspray, because you can use hairspray, it's not gonna be as archival and as good as this, but it is a cheap way. And they don't do little bottles of this. I've wanted this for I kind of thought maybe if I was out and about, oh, I, I know, I know, not for my old pastels, but I did buy this for my chalk, not my chalk, Sandy, get yourself together, for charcoal. Uh, I thought I would maybe use this if I did a quick charcoal sketch. So, and I also thought that this could be a good deterrent if somebody tries to get me when I'm out someplace and I can just grab my fixative and spray them. I don't know if that would ever help happen, but at least I've got some weapon on hand. What I wanted to do though, was to test for you guys if the hairspray worked as good as the fixative. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go outside, we're gonna fix a fixative, a fixative, I don't know. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how I spray these and give you one or two tips. And then what I wanted to do also, I made some little just marks right here on a sketchbook and I'm gonna spray this with my hairspray and then I'll press real hard after it's all dry and we'll see if this works as good because I've been wanting to know for myself and now I'll know for all of us. Let's see, was there anything else I wanted to say? Oh, the other thing, I did this sketch, which is not very good, um, recently, most of this is paint, but I did use color pencils and some of my wax pastels. Did I use wax pastels? I was pretty sure I did. Yeah. Hmm. Thought I did. Well, what I was about to tell you. Yes, I did. I can see spots. I sprayed this with my fixative. Actually, I can't remember if I just sprayed it with. This is not helpful because I can't remember everything. Sorry, but I'm just gonna tell you. I feel like I just sprayed it with the hairspray. I'm quite sure I just sprayed it with the hairspray. Probably once, maybe twice. I think while I was there. And then I was trying out some varnish recently and I varnished right on top of it and it was just fine. I thought I'd try something that I wasn't very precious about. And nothing, the color pencils didn't smear, the oil pastels didn't smear. So that's a possibility. I'm not loving this varnish and like the shine. It's supposed to be satin, but it's pretty shiny. But I know you're gonna ask me about that too. There's that. Maybe what I should do is fixative. Here's another sketch that is all just oil pastel. 
I'm not crazy about it. I shared it with y'all and y'all did like it. Hmm. Maybe what I'll do, if I remember, is spray this with fixative and then try varnishing it. And then we'll know if you can varnish after you've fixated it. Oh, that's terrible. That means this, doesn't it? Okay, after you've used fixative. I'll just use the long phrase instead of saying fix it. Anyways, okay, you know what I'm trying to say. Sorry, that said some. Okay, so let's go outside. We're gonna do this quick because it is 20 degrees outside and very cold, so let's go do this. Is there anything else I wanted to tell you guys? Okay, let's go outside. Tip number one is if your bottle is slightly empty like mine is, you'll want to prop your drawing up because when you do like that, it doesn't, it sputters. Also just want you to notice real quick though how I get like an even coverage because this is gonna happen fast, all right? The other tip is this. You can either put a mask on. I don't like to put a mask on. It just gets sticky everywhere. So what I do, so we're gonna hold our breath, spray, and then run, okay? So here we go. Followed me. I'm gonna hold my breath and go back in and do the hairspray one on our sample that we're trying out, okay? <sighs> okay, now what you can do is either set your timer for 10 second, uh, 10 minutes and come back and do like another layer or here's the next tip. This is often what I'm doing out here on my front porch. <laughs> I go like this. You can do all this kind of stuff to dry it faster. I'm trying not to get crazy. Yeah, so this works really good too. It's cold out here, so I don't know how this is gonna work. You can get like some exercise going. <laughs> Grady works right there, and so he usually sees me. Look, we're already dry, we can do. Whoops. <laughs> number two. Okay, so we get our good breath over here. <sighs> Repeat, you know, the circle thing and all that. I'm gonna do another, it's really cool. I'm gonna do another layer of the hairspray. I think I'm just gonna do two layers of the hairspray because that's probably all you're gonna do. A lot of breath from all the twirling. And We'll see how that goes and test that. Okay. All right, I'm back inside, warming up the hands. One of the things I wanted to mention that I think I forgot out there because I was holding my breath so much was you can tell when it's dry. So if you want to spray it and even like turn it like this, you can see if you got everything or not because it will look wet. Well, it will be wet, but it will definitely look wet and you can tell when it's dry. So you can kind of, you know, do the fan thing and it will look not wet. It won't look like, it'll just look dry. It'll look like a piece of paper. You won't be able to tell anything. Um, it does not leave a shiny anything. I do think the hairspray may leave something shiny. Well, let me look. <clears throat> No, the hairspray did not leave shiny either. I did only do two coats of that, but I'll let you know how that goes. I'm about to, I'm gonna make sure it's dry and then I'm gonna smush it and see how well it does. You wouldn't probably normally be doing that. Well, I guess if you had turned the page and you were drawing on it, you would be smushing it. So we'll do the smush test and I'll let you know. But I did want to tell you that about the, you can tell when it's all covered or not, or if you missed any spots, cause it will be, wet looking and you can tell when it's dry because it won't be wet looking anymore. It'll be dry looking. Yeah. yeah. So one of the ways I can tell I've put enough layers is if I'm pressing on this, for one, it does feel dry and it doesn't feel sticky. You know how there'll be like little balls of oil pastel. You can also just, after you've sprayed, they kind of get coated so you can just dust them off if you want. That will probably help the smushing also. Yeah, see how they, and they just kind of dust off nothing smears. I am getting some stuff on my fingers, so I probably could have sprayed this another time or two, and maybe I will, but it's just, but I was going like that also. So it's not gonna be perfect, but it will be better than nothing. I do feel like this could use another layer, so I may do that. Okay, let's do the smush test for this 
and see what we get. So this was the hairspray one. This is how I want to do it. I want to kind of mimic if I was drawing. Actually, let's see. You know, if I was, and we can also just do it like that. Okay, yeah, so some does come off on, off of it, but not much. Oh, I can't see that. I would be happy with that. You get a little bit of transfer, but nothing like you would if you had not sprayed that. So yeah, that was with the hairspray. I'm happy with that. That would satisfy me compared to what it would be if you had not done that. In fact, should we do that? So for test's sake, let's just do that. So there's, can you let me see this? Here, let me move y'all over. Okay, that should be better. So you can see a little bit of transfer. No. Yeah, look at the difference. And then if you were, you know, really getting at it on top of that, I mean, look at that. You see, we did that same thing here. Big, big difference. Yeah. Good job, hairspray. Good job. Something I wanted to show you guys and mentioned while I'm on the subject of these oil pastels. I wanted to tell you about these sketchbooks. These are going to be coming up in a future art haul, but I am using them here. So I wanted to just go on and show you. They were hand bound, handmade for me, and they are amazing. Again, I'm going to be mentioning more in a future art haul, but I just wanted to mention it right here. Here is the company that does them. I could not love these more. They are the perfect size. They are gorgeous. I love them. They both have different papers in them, but I'll put the link below. I just wanted to go on and mention it because you have seen me using them. They're just absolutely amazing. And then they come with these little wrap around things too. This is what I was spinning around. These were like hitting Grady when I was outside on the porch spinning. <laughs> he was getting smacked in the face. I think this leather one was getting him. <laughs> Anyways, okay. And look, this one says Hester. So, yes, Autumn and her fiance make these and they are wonderful. I'll definitely be getting some more in the future because they're so amazing. Okay, more on that in the future. More, 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 more later. I wanted to show you guys what I'm doing with my Karen Dash Neo Color 2. I'm taking the clothes off. I'm taking the wrappers off and I'm breaking them. I'm wondering, does that make you nervous? This is what I found out with these. If you don't break them, while they're still big, you tend to hold them like this. You don't get in there um, and really get after it. When they're broken, you just hold them differently and can use them on their side. You just kind of get after it a little better and a little more childlike when it's small and in your hand. Here's what I did first though. I know that I swatched all of these when I got them. But I cannot find that anywhere. So what I've been doing recently, I'm swatching and then I'm putting it up here on this magnetized thing. So I have all my sets up there, just quick visual. So I did that, I did a quick little color chart because why this is so important is because if I pull the wrapper off, I'm pulling the name and the info off. The other thing is though, they get dirty and rub off the name and all that so you really need a little color thing and I just put the numbers on there so that's important before you take the clothes off of your neo colors I highly recommend this I'm wondering if that's making you guys cringe I had to stop because it was killing my fingernails some of these wrappers are like they are on there big time oh, the other reason I like having the wrapper off is because I can see the color so much better than when the wrapper is on and pretty much covering the pastel because the wrapper does not match it completely. So this just feels wonderful to have them fully exposed. Do you think y'all would be interested in that or does that make you nervous or you're like, no way I'm gonna pull the wrapper off, forget it. Okay, this is a work in progress. I'll show you this because right now it looks like Scary Cat, but if this gets if I don't give up and um, get bored with this, I'll show you this. I'm basically using the Neo Color 2s. I put them on. I dip my fingers in water and smoosh them around. What it does is allows you then to layer and layer and layer. Let's see if I have anything in here to show you. 
this is that one was with pastels or pastels but not those okay i did this y'all have seen this this is not that great i wish i had some others to show you anyway she'll just have to trust me it's a really nice method but I am finding I am using these more, you know, when they're in this state. The other thing is then they're already like messed up. So you don't feel so precious about them because they're not cheap, especially if you buy a big set like this. But this just feels like broken kid crayon. So let's just get after it. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm doing. But I thought I'd show you my naked neo colors. I haven't finished taking of those off yet. My finger needs a little bit of rest, but that was a super fun, quick little sketch. I used some of my gouache for basically the rug, this, a little bit of the background, and the rest of it with the Neo Color. You know, just kind of something fun, quick, messy. You know, sometimes you just want to get your hands dirty, and this is a good way to do it. I'm still learning how to layer well, but super fun. Yeah. I thought his little face or her little face turned out really sweet. I'm going to go spray this now. Well, actually, I think it's still drying just a little bit. Once it's fully dry, I'm going to spray it with this fixative and then it will not squish as much when the pages get pushed together. This is my setup. Uh, I just wanted to sit down today. Thought it would kind of preserve some energy. I wasn't feeling great today. My allergies are bad. And I just had that face there. I kept turning it around. And what's nice is when you sit really low to the ground is that the ground works really well as a big table for you. I'm using the Leader Easel, the one that you saw me do a review on a while back. I'll put the link to that. But I have not done a big canvas like this on this e easel. And this is literally the largest that it will hold in it worked fantastic. Well, I may be done with this. I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm gonna put this on the wall and live with it for a little bit. But that was super fun. It's really nice because if you can just stay in don't be scared mode, it's really fun to just layer, cut back in, yeah, put things in, take things out, and it just builds up in a way. I'm really pleased with it. I wish this was like five times bigger so I could, maybe not five, three times bigger so I could put it over my mantle. I think that would be a really fun piece. Maybe I should do a big one. Hmm. We'll see. I'm going to do some more this size, I think. Okay, I'm excited to show you these flower paintings. Cooper's out here with me being a help. Kind of. I'm super proud of these paintings. Super proud. And they look amazing on my walls. Let me give you a closer look. This was the first one I did. These will be up on my website for sale. This flower right here is my favorite. They read as white, but I love the greenish color. And then these things were really fun to paint right here. And then you're going to see that this guy makes it into the next painting that I show you. But I just couldn't be happier with it. And I'm not even a blue... <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm not even a blue fan. I'm not a blue person at all, but I love this. I guess it's just the right amount of pop and color. I also love the movement of these flowers right here in the middle. All right, let me go get the other one and show you. Here's the second one I did. They are both, what is the size? 24 by 30 maybe? Something like that. It's on my website. They're the larger sizes that I've been doing. Something about this one, I feel like these irises, these three irises have like a personality about them because it's like they're kind of leaning in to hear what this guy right here is having to say. And then this one's just here, you know, because he just is. I feel like those irises have so much personality and there's just detail about them that I love. Yeah, there's just a lot of color, nice movement. Here is that flower that made it into this painting from the other one. It's really nice to be able to use other paintings as reference. And there's just something about the color of these right here that I love. So those are both up on my website. Let me know which one you like best. Okay, let me show you these two paintings on my wall. Oh wow, the way the light's coming in, these walls look neon green. They are not neon green. I think when, we, when I get in closer, you'll get to see more of the accurate color. Yeah. Don't they look so good on the wall together? So I know they're going to get snatched up, but while they're here, I'm going to enjoy them. It is nice to have a space like this where I can put paintings on the wall and just kind of get a visual of how they look in real life. Okay, here's from a different angle. I thought I'd show you this way too. 
these paintings are always getting changed out, usually because they're getting sold. Like that one's sold, so that one's going off to its new home shortly. I love this system. A lot of you guys asked me about this picture hanging system. I got this at Pottery Barn. 50 million years ago. I don't think they have that exact one anymore, but they do have similar ones. They're not the easiest to change a painting out, but it is useful. I do find them easier for like canvases. I don't think I showed you guys like the sides of the painting. And I always try to make the sides really interesting, the top, the bottom, so that way you can just put them on the wall like this and not have to frame them if you like. What do you think and which one's your favorite? One of my collectors sent me this short little video of painting that they bought from me. I don't know if y'all remember this one from a video forever ago. It was one of my under the table series, but it was so fun to see this up on the wall with all her other great paintings. So I thought I would share it with you guys. All right, I sprayed this sketch three times. Probably should have done four, but I did three. Feels pretty dry. I'm going to do some varnishing. I've been using this varnish or testing it. It's fine. It's fine. I'm not in love. It's a little, I don't know. I'm not in love, but it's fine. I would not use it for a good painting at this point. I'm not liking how it changes the quality. In fact, I'm feeling like I'm probably going to regret doing this but for the sake of testing for you guys, I'm going to do it. And if I feel like it's smearing the oil pastel, I may stop. would be to have just enough but not too much of the varnish on here and to not go over it too many times probably help if my thing right here was flat it's not smearing yet now let me see if I've got an even coat. Uh, that went on really good. I'm stunned. So that means the fixative works. That was only three coats. It did not smear it. That's really cool. That tells me that I could use these oil pastels, I feel like, on like canvas on a real painting. Probably spray it with the fixative and be fine with it. I don't know if I would be, if I would do that, but I think that if I can put varnish on top of it, it should be fine, so I don't know. I'm gonna let this dry. It dries pretty quick, and I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. I like to use yogurt lids for my varnish stuff uh, because you always want just a thin layer and then it will run in these little grooves sometimes and I can stick my brush in there because you don't want a ton of varnish ever on your brush. And then I can just throw this away and I'm going to go clean this now with the normal stuff that I clean my brushes with, which is, it's a floor cleaner. What is it? I have a video way, way back that's on how to clean your brushes. So it's there. Murphy oil soap. I think that's what it's called. Okay, I'm gonna go clean this. Okay, I only put one layer of this varnish on here. I like it on the oil pastels better than the other paint. It looks gorgeous. And you could always put more than one layer. It gives it a little bit of a sheen. It is satin, but it makes it look like oil paint. It really changed it into kind of a neat quality, but basically the big thing is, is that it did not smear. That's what we're always looking for, isn't it? It did not smear at all when I was putting it on. So this could also be an option in your sketchbooks or something. You could spray it and then varnish it like that. Now I cannot speak for archival longevity because basically oil pastels never dry. I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to get some comments on here about blah, 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 whatever, and that's fine. But we're just talking about using these for 
maybe sketches or how to you know preserve it for shipping or something like that but this is definitely an option and it really made it pretty i really like that i'm kind of happy i did that now okay i'm glad we did this i'm glad we did this together because i feel like i learned a lot i feel more confident in my hairspray now who's gonna say that today i feel more confident in my hairspray but i do feel more confident in my hairspray i also feel like i'm like leaning over let me sit down I needed to sit down. I was shaking you guys. So I feel more confident with the hairspray. I think that if you did want to varnish it, you could do that. You would definitely need to spray the fixative first, I would think. And it actually looks really pretty varnished. Wow, we learned a lot today and I think it was a lot of fun. And this is kind of what you just have to do sometimes is purchase something or borrow it from another friend, test it out, test it in the different ways. But I do think if you had a sketch in your sketchbook that you didn't want messed up at all. You could spray the fixative, then you could spray the varnish, and you would be good to go. I don't think you're gonna have any problems. I actually don't mind a little smushing, so the fixative is gonna be just perfect for me, because now if there's a little bit of smushing, it will just kind of create some interest, and I'll be fine with that. But I don't want it to get obliterated, which is what they used to do if I didn't keep wax paper. And here's another option. If you don't wanna deal with any of that, at all just keep wax paper in between the pages mm. Mm -mm -mm. let me show you hold on yeah i do that in some of mine in fact i've got several that i could take time to varnish, or I mean not to varnish, to do the spray fixative, but I don't. I've got a piece of glassine paper. I've just taped it there. And it kind of is a neat experience because it makes it like a picture book that it's like, ooh, what's under there? So that's always an option too. And you don't even have to tape it. You could just stick it in there, you know? So, yeah. So I could go through and work on some of these, but I haven't. Those are all my tips for this week. Hope I answered all your questions. This kind of relationship makes me learn things too. So I know you guys are always so kind and like thanking me for all the time, but it also is such a big help to me. So I learned a lot today. So I think that's it for this week. I will see you back here next week. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.